Hi everyone, this is Anson from AntonAlex.com and thanks for tuning in to part 6 of my 2013 video series on using Gmail. All the other parts of this series are linked in the description below. I'm not going to go over all of them, but it's pretty much everything you need to know to use Gmail here in 2013. This video is going to be an introduction to Gmail Labs and I'm also going to take you through and show you some of the recommended labs that I use or recommend other people to use. So I hope this video helps and enjoy. In order to access the labs section of our Gmail account, we need to go up to the right side of our screen, click on the gear icon, and then go ahead and access your settings. From your Gmail settings, you'll notice that the third to last option is Labs. And as I mentioned earlier in this video series, these are experimental features that you can add on to your Gmail account to just enhance the functionality of what you can do in Gmail. So you'll notice that all of the labs have a title and then a short description. And then over on the right, you can enable the lab if you want. Once you've enabled the labs that you want to use, you can go to the bottom and hit Save Changes. But let's just go down this list and talk about a few of the more useful apps. So if I scroll down here a little bit, the first one that you might want to use is canned responses. If you find yourself writing the same email with pretty much the same text to people, um, I don't know, I do it a lot of times if I have somebody who wants to be a guest author on my website, I will have a canned response because I get four or five of those emails a day. So we're talking in the hundreds over the course of a week. And it's pretty much the same response. You know, here's the requirements, here's what I offer, blah, blah, blah. And then if they get back to me, it gets personal after that. But I don't want to type out this two or three paragraph email that I'm sending almost 100 times a week. Uh, so canned responses, you can create it once and then you could go ahead and the next time you need to send the same email, you could type in the person's name, then you could just click on the canned response you want to use. And you can go ahead and you save a lot of time from typing. So that's one of my use. I also use the Google, Google Calendar gadget. Um, so if you enable that and we'll enable our canned responses, the Google Calendar gadget is just a calendar that will appear on the left side of your Gmail account showing you events that are upcoming for that day and that week. So if you use Google Calendar, it's a really nice way to see your events without having to actually access Google Calendar every day. You can see it right from your email. I also use the Google Docs gadget. Uh, if you use Google Docs, you can have this little widget attached in Gmail as well, and it shows you some of the most recently used documents. So instead of having to go up here and click on Drive, you can just access them from the left side of your screen. That's definitely a good feature. Scrolling down here, the mark as red button. A lot of times I have emails that I know what they are. I, I don't want to take them out of my inbox yet. Um, but I don't want to have to click and open it to mark it as red. I just want to check mark four emails at once and then hit the mark as red button so that they're all marked as red. So that's a pretty cool feature as well. Multiple inboxes. You can enable this lab if you want, but you'll notice that we also have the inbox options in the Gmail settings that I went over earlier in this video series. So you can take a look at the Gmail settings tutorial if you're more interested in that. Scrolling down here, uh, the preview pane. Uh, I have played around with this. It can make it so that you have your email, you know, on the top here. When you click on one, you can still see your list of emails, but then you can actually preview your full email. I actually don't like this lab, but a lot of people do. Uh, I've tried using it and it's just, it's a little too much information for me. I like to be able to click on an email and actually just see that specific email, but that might be one that you're interested in enabling right side chat. I definitely do this on all my accounts because once you add the Google Calendar and the Google Docs widget over here on the left, you've got this chat widget that starts to take up some space as people get added to your list. So I like to move this chat over to the right when I'm using Gmail. So I've got all my email stuff, document calendar over here. And if I want to chat with somebody, I can do it on the right side of my screen. Uh, so that's a good one. Smart labels, I, I recommend not using this lab, uh, especially if you've set up custom labels already in Gmail. This can really screw up some of your labels because it's going to automatically create labels for you. It's going to start labeling your emails. I really recommend not using this lab, to be honest. The undo send lab, that's obviously a pretty good one to have. You can enable this lab and then for a few seconds after you send a message, you can hit the undo button uh, and it won't send that message. So that's useful if you find yourself wanting to unsend some messages. You can definitely do that. The unread message icon, this is a feature that I usually use 
what that is, is you'll notice that at the top of your screen, it will have a number for all of the unread emails you have. So up here at the very top, if I wasn't in the Gmail tab, if I was in another tab doing something else on the internet, I could just glance at the tab to see how many unread emails I have. So definitely take a look at these different labs. Some of them are really useful. Uh, and it's definitely going to depend on your particular situation and what your needs are here in Gmail. So I just hit save changes. Uh, you'll notice that a few things probably changed my chats over here on the left now. Uh, if you want to see where you can do the canned responses, you actually have to be in an email so you can hit compose. And then if you hit this drop down on the right, you have the option to add a new canned response. So if we just say this is a canned response and just for a little tip when you're doing canned responses, delete out your signature when you're saving the response because your signature is automatically going to be in there when you create a new email. So if I want to save this response, I can just hit the drop down, go over to canned responses, I can hit new canned response, I'll call it whatever I want, I'll call this test. And then now what I would probably do is I would probably just discard this email, start a new one so my signature's in there, and then I can just go down to the arrow, go to canned responses, I have some more options. I can delete, I can save, or I can insert. So if I insert test, you'll see there's my canned response, my signature stays, and I could go ahead and send this email. So that's how the canned responses work. Um, <clears throat> so again, check out the lab, some very useful features. I think I've got at least two more videos coming up in this video series here for 2013. I'm going to do a video on using chat here in Gmail, and then I'm also going to do a video on using Google Voice. And I think that might be the end of the official 2013 Gmail video series. That will be eight videos in total. But as you've seen with my YouTube channel in the past, I tend to do some little update videos throughout the year as new features come out, updates are rolled out. Uh, so stay tuned for those as well. If you found this video helpful, I would really appreciate a thumbs up here on YouTube. And if you want to see more technology tips and tutorials, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to check out the other videos in this series that are in the description of this video here on YouTube. That's all I have for you today. This is Anson from AnsonAlex.com.